that, that that's extremely interesting, both from Upila and Big, because I, I, I tend to firstly not look at the ideal of collectivism as the big bad that it has been made out to be in this instance, right? Because I am inherently a proponent of voluntary action. So if people decide to voluntarily collectivize themselves, would that be necessarily bad? Even in the economic context, really, right? There is, you know, a catalyst here. An economy is a collective yeah. and it is pretty good. And also whilst Big, well, whilst Big was talking, right, I, I find the, at the very least, not willing to apply this insistence with individualism even in our analysis, because I find it to be quite, you know, impossible if so, because you're referring to the youth having lost their identity. You're a part of the youth, but I don't mm -hmm. think you consider yourself having lost your identity, right? So, but but that is the dangers of collectivism that I will agree with. It is the whole drawing conclusions about large swaths of people, yeah. which eliminates their individuality. I'm a huge proponent of methodological individualism. I find the Austrian methodology and Austrian you know, scheme to be extremely interesting because you get to understand a collective idea or a collective phenomena like a market through analyzing individual actions. Mm -hmm. So the two necessarily can coexist if we can have justice at the very least determining the relations of existence. So in the instance of what you were talking about, about what motivates South Africans to to gravitate towards uh, socialism is because of their appeal to collectivism, right? And I'll be like, yeah, South Africans have different appeals to collectivism. For instance, South Africa is a religious country. So as a collective, there are, you know, Christians. Mm -hmm. Would you say that South Africans' identification with the Christian collective is what drives them to socialism, even though, you know, there is a Christian collective? Yeah. So in, in response to that, I would say there's a there's a difference between uh, individualism and collectivism. Correct. Um, and I think that's partly where uh, many people sort of switch off when you talk about individualism, because many people, when thinking about individualism, think it's just about myself as if I exist in a silo. What individual is, what, what individualism is. And this is, by the way, the context in which people like Adam Smith arose. It's in the context of an individual existing within a society. So mm -hmm. it's the whole Robinson Crusoe analogy. Mm -hmm. People don't, mm -hmm. like the, a person isn't an island. You don't exist on your own. Mm -hmm. um, the, the individual only becomes relevant in the context of a society. Mm -hmm. So when I say mm -hmm. that um, I'm an individualist, I'm not saying that I live alone and well, what many people take from Adam Smith or people who claim to have read, read Adam Smith but who really have not, who draw from him, uh, from the Wealth of Nations, the line, um, uh, human beings or the, the butcher and the baker are only motivated by their own regard for their self-interest and not for respect for the other person. Um, I think that's a misreading of Smith. And I think in the full reading of Smith, through the reading of the theory of moral sentiments, one really gets what he's trying to say. He's not saying that the butcher and the baker is disrespectful mm -hmm. or he's not honoring the next person. He's simply saying that he is, in, in, in order for his business to thrive, he needs to treat you with respect. He puts it wonderfully in the theory of moral sentiments. He says, man naturally desires not only to be loved, but to be lovely. And lovely in 18th century English does not mean, it's not an aesthetic point. It doesn't mean um, an appeal to beauty or such things. It meant um, to be morally attractive. So he's essentially saying in the two readings of the book that um, I as the baker or the butcher or whatever business I'm in need to treat you with respect because my treating you with respect is contingent upon you coming back to my business to do business with me again. So that's the regard for the self-interest. So I do think that um, people tend to misunderstand what individualism means um, and think it means selfishness. And, yeah. you know, when people start throwing words like Ubuntu as if when you call yourself an individual and you regard your own individualism as if you're, you know, diametrically opposed to Ubuntu, it's actually not the case. And I think it's worthwhile stressing the point that when I call myself an individualist, I'm not saying that I don't regard the next person. I'm saying yeah. that my actions are my actions, but within the context of a society, within the context of a group. And I think that's the proper grounding of what individualism is. And I think much of what confuses people is the failure to recognize that being an individual does not mean existing on the planet alone. It means existing with other people. Yeah. I echo your comments and I don't think I have much to add to actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so 100% agree. Um, I form part of a collective, you know, these, I s started speaking that I'm an individual before I form such institutions such as religion, culture. Um, however, these are uh, collectives as well, but they're made up of individuals and set up, 
And within those collectives, there are different characteristics that differentiate communities, for example. For example, the Tosa culture is, for example, it's not just the language. Within the Eastern Cape, there's many different tribes, many different customs that are done in each and every uh, village. And all of these add towards the unique characteristics within that culture. Same thing with religion. Um, my issue when it comes to collectivism is when it starts to become to the point where we start ignoring the individual. And this is what is Marxism. It ignores the individual and prioritizes the group. It's not clearly defined what is the group is. Is the group a few politicians? Is the group everyone in society? This is not clearly stated. Instead, what ends up being the consequence is that you have a few select individuals that manage the lives of millions of people. And you can't manage the lives of 60 million South Africans, who, which all have different characteristics. It ends up in massive uh, devastation, poverty levels, of which there have been many examples in the past. That is my primary issue with collect collectivism. That's great. That's great. That's great. I, I, I like at the very least that we, we came to an acknowledgement that even within our conceptualization of individualism, we do not ascribe to the extreme form of individualism because it still can be called individualism when you, you know, have no regard for the next person. So this balance that we seem to always come to when discussing individualism, I'd like to see it at the very least. I think at the, it would be a good it would be a good way to communicate our ideas when talking about individualism to say that, you know, it does not mean the disregard of the collective, even with collectivism, right? When critiquing collectivism, we can do what Pillar just said, right? Like, he, mm -hmm. he, like the, the nuanced discussion in that is what I am much more interested in, particularly when it relates to, you know, things like these, because you have collectives that exist in society. So if we're going to, you know, as a general rule, say collectivism is, you know, bad, we kind of push away a large segment of the population that belong to collectives that they identify with quite strongly. Whereas we can show them the pitfalls of, you know, being super collectivist mm -hmm. or being super individualist. And I think, you know, we can try and strike a balance in the middle, which will be, which will be great. Yeah.